This episode of Real Engineering was brought to you by Skillshare, home to over 16,000 classes that could teach you a new life skill. The first 500 people to sign up with the link in the description will get a two month free trial. On October 15th, 1997, Trust SSC became the first land vehicle to break the sound barrier, breaking the land speed record with an astonishing top speed of 1,228 kilometers per hour, which still stands today. 20 years on and the team that created this wonder of engineering is now looking to break their own record with the new and improved Bloodhound SSC, a vehicle looking to achieve an amazing milestone of 1000 miles per hour or 1609 kilometers per hour for those of us living in the civilized world. Creating a land vehicle capable of achieving these speeds presents some very unique engineering challenges and today we're going to explore a problem that even limits the top speed of the Bugatti Chiron how to design a wheel capable of withstanding the extreme forces at these speeds. When designing a high-speed car, there are two problems of physics that grow disproportionately the faster you travel. First, the drag force the vehicle experiences grows with the square of the speed. Returns in top speed for every unit of horsepower included shrinks the faster you go, but that's a problem for a future video. Today we're going to explore the second problem, the massive inertial forces the tire experiences at higher speed. If you watch my video on artificial gravity, you will know that a spinning mass will experience an increase in weight, proportional to the square of the angular velocity, multiplied by the distance from the rotational center. This phenomenon can be used to create artificial gravity in space, but put too much weight on the outside of the spaceship, or spin it too fast and it could tear itself apart. The slow-mo guys did an absolutely mesmerizing test of this when they spun a CD up to 23,000 revolutions per minute, before it shattered under the weight of its own inertia. This effect is one of the key limiting factors currently holding cars like the Bugatti Chiron, the Hennessy Venom and the Coenzeg Agera from the illustrious milestone of 300 miles per hour. Just this month, the Agera broke the production speed record and came the closest to that milestone with a top speed of 277.9 miles per hour. There isn't a tire on earth that can withstand the inertial forces at higher speeds. The rubber would simply peel away from the hub, but evidently we aren't far off. However, these cars don't come close to the speeds of the land speed record held by Trust SSC. So what kind of wheel did the Trust SSC use when it demolished the land speed record all the way back in 1997? Well, the Trust SSC has one primary advantage when it comes to wheels. It has very little use for traction beyond braking and turning, as the wheels are not used to transmit rotational motion from the engine to linear motion. It achieves its propulsion from jet engines and rockets. These wheels simply need to support the 7.5 ton weight of the vehicle and allow it to roll along the ground, and have enough lateral traction to allow the driver to steer the car. At higher speeds this even becomes unnecessary, as the vehicle gets the majority of its steering force from the force of air hitting the angled wheels. The Bloodhound derives its power from an EJ200 jet engine, the same used by the Eurofighter Typhoon, and an even more powerful hybrid rocket engine. At its fastest, the wheels of the Bloodhound will be rotating 10,000 times per minute. Using that equation from earlier, and with the wheel radius at 76.5 cm, we can calculate that any mass on the outside of the rim will experience 50,000 times the acceleration due to gravity. A 1 kg bag of sugar would weigh the same as a fully laden articulated truck. With these problems in mind, let's begin the design process for our 1000 mph wheels. Step 1 is material selection. This will determine a large portion of our design process, as the design will change according to the material properties and the manufacturing techniques. As explained before, traction is not a huge concern, so we can forgo the rubber tire and instead go for a solid metal wheel, which can better withstand the centrifugal force caused by the spinning wheel. The metal needs to not only be strong enough to withstand these forces, but also needs to be light enough to minimize the inertial force. On top of all this, the material needs to be capable of absorbing damage, which is why a carbon fibre wheel is not an option, as at these speeds an unexpected hit from a stone could potentially shatter the entire wheel if the material is too brittle. These are a very particular set of requirements that forged aerospace grade aluminium fulfills best. Now that the material has been selected, we can begin forging blanks. And to forge these wheels, the team took huge billets of aluminium alloy 7037 and heated them to 390 degrees and compressed it with a 3600 ton forging press. The forging clamp operator here deserves credit for the insane precision, taking this cylindrical billet and forming it into a compressed disc. This is our blank, which will be passed to a milling machine to mill the wheel into its final shape. Transforming the cast material, which is the material that was formed by pouring molten aluminium into a cast, into this forged material makes the material vastly stronger. When the molten aluminium is cooling to become solid, 
The crystal structure grows randomly from nucleation sites, like a snowflake from a single ice crystal. This unpredictable process gives rise to a random jumble of crystal sizes, grain directions and voids, called dislocations, between individual crystal grains. When this solidified cast aluminium is compressed, the crystal grains increase in density and dislocations pile up, which increases the energy required to cause expansive deformation. This process is called work hardening and it drastically increases the strength of the material, but it also makes it less ductile. But that's desirable in this situation as we do not want the wheel expanding during use. Now that we have our blank material, we can begin the prototyping process. We do not want to use this expensive material and begin prototyping with it. Failed designs would be extremely expensive. The team will first start with some basic design parameters like wheel diameter. They will then determine the general thickness needed for vehicle stability and to withstand the predicted stress. Using these parameters, a model will be generated and tested computationally. We performed our own computational analysis on stress and deformation from inertial forces on the Bloodhound wheel using SimScale. Using a tool like this, the engineers will refine the design. Once a suitable design is found, prototyping with a cheaper material will begin. Many engineering firms today use 3D printing for this design verification step, but the Bloodhound team used a cheap cast aluminium wheel. They attached this wheel to a trailer that simulated the weight of the Bloodhound on a single axle, and it helped them discover that their wheel did not adequately spread the load over the desert surface, meaning it was breaking through the crust and driving on the hard bedrock underneath, which would damage the wheel. Back to the drawing board to increase the context surface of the wheel. This design and prototyping process will be repeated until a suitable design is found. Once the final design was decided on, the expensive forged aluminium was passed to a CNC milling machine, which uses computer guidance to cut the wheel to its final shape. However, when a work hardened material is machined, it disrupts the compressive forces that developed in the skin during the forging process. The surface of the machined metal is like a bottle of compressed air, and a small leak may lead to an explosion. It wants to expand, so if a crack forms in the surface of this material, these expansive forces will increase the chances of that crack growing, and so another surface treatment called shop heaning is applied by shooting thousands of tiny spherical balls at the surface of the machined product to introduce a thin layer of higher compression which helps the material resist crack growth. This final product was sent for design verification again, where it was rotated up to speed in a controlled environment to ensure it would safely take this astounding vehicle to 1.3 times the speed of sound. Just two months ago, the Bloodhound SSC completed a 200 mph test at Cornwall Airport. The Bloodhound reached this top speed in just 8 seconds, with a 0-60 to 60 speed of just 2 seconds. That's a half second faster than the Bugatti Chiron. This run served to test the Eurofighter Typhoon engine and to demonstrate the vehicle to the public. After all, the goal is not to break the record. They already have the record with the Trust SSC. The real goal here is to inspire people to get excited about engineering, which I can wholeheartedly get behind. Sharing passion and skill is something this channel was founded on, and today I want to share with you a fantastic course on Skillshare that teaches you one of the most important skills in the world, storytelling. With this channel, I didn't want to be another science channel explaining science without any real context. The magic in the world of engineering lies in the motivations of the engineers, and to share their story, I had to learn how to tell a compelling story. And this is a skill that will serve you in so many walks in life. Sharing the story of your company can bring it to new heights and that's what Keith Yamashita, whose course I am recommending today, has done with companies like Apple, General Electric and eBay. In this course, Keith walks you through the components of a great story and the methods of composing and refining a story. The first 500 people to sign up to Skillshare with this link will get a 2 month free trial to watch this or any number of the other 17,000 classes in subjects that range from graphic design to game development. A premium membership begins around $10 a month for unlimited access to all courses, but in those free two months, you could easily learn the skills you need to start a new hobby or business, just like I did with this channel. So ask yourself right now, what skill have you been putting off learning? What project have you been dreaming of completing but you aren't sure if you have the skills to do it? Why not start right now and sign up to Skillshare using the link below? You've nothing to lose and a valuable life skill to gain. As usual, thanks for watching and thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see more from me, the links for my Instagram, Facebook and Twitter profiles are below.